you're a person who thinks carefully enough about all the decisions that you make in life? Of course not. That would be impossible. Imagine that you have to make several decisions in a short period of time. You have to decide which product to buy from among several choices, so now you have to make detailed research about each one of them. Someone asked you to give money to a charity, but before you decide if you should do it, you have to learn everything about this charity. You are asked what you think about the newly met person, but you leave the answer for later, until you know enough about this person. You see some new product that grabs your attention, you think about buying it, but before you decide, you have to go home and think hard if it's worthy of your money. You have to decide which movie to watch this evening, but you spend the little time you have left on thinking through this decision. You wanted to go to the parliamentary elections, but you didn't go, because you didn't have enough time left to learn about every candidate and think through your decision. This kind of thinking, called controlled thinking, is conscious, intentional, voluntary and affordable. It allows us to make better, more informed decisions, but its obvious flaw is that using it all the time would force us to spend a lot of time on careful deliberation, but not enough time on actual decision making. Decision making would become even harder, not easier. Fortunately, human mind can use tools that allow it to draw conclusions quickly and make decisions without the necessity of long, careful thinking. These tools belong to the so-called automatic thinking, thinking that is non-conscious, unintentional, involuntary and effortless. One of these tools are schemas. Schemas are cognitive structures that organize knowledge about the world and influence how we see, analyze and remember information. In practice, schema is a knowledge that we have about something, people, objects, ideas, places, activities and so on. Schemas can be divided into three groups based on their accessibility, that is how easy human mind can reach for them and use them to make judgments. Imagine that a certain person has just learned about a car accident where a driver had suddenly drove off a road on a gentle turn. If this person recently has had a dangerous situation during driving caused by a hole in the road, then the very first explanation that can come to this person's mind is that the car accident happened probably because of the bad state of the road. This is an example of schema that becomes available temporarily as a consequence of recent experiences. Schemas created by recent experiences become more available for a certain amount of time after these experiences. If this person has a friend who had a car accident while driving drunk, then the very first explanation that can come to this person's mind is that the driver probably was drunk. This is an example of schema that is permanently available because of past experiences. Situations that made a large enough impression create schemas that are constantly available and ready to be used. If this person is currently organizing a campaign against fast driving, then the very first explanation that can come to this person's mind is that the driver probably was driving too fast. This is an example of schema that becomes more available temporarily because it's tied to a goal that we currently focus on. The advantage of schemas is that they suggest us observations, explanations and conclusions automatically and effortlessly. The obvious disadvantage is that they can be inaccurate, they might not fit to the situation that is under consideration and they can be completely wrong, which can lead to drawing completely wrong conclusions and making wrong decisions. This is something that happens, for example, when we do not doubt our conclusion that was provided by a schema, instead of taking it as what it is, just one of many possible explanations. Schemas can also contribute to formation of stereotypes. Another disadvantage is known as self-fulfilling prophecy. It occurs when schemas influence our own expectations in such way that we, by our own behavior, create situations that confirm that our schemas are correct. For example, we meet for the first time someone whom we already dislike because maybe we've learned that this person belongs to some group that we dislike. If we expect that this person will be unpleasant, then involuntarily we may behave in a way that will provoke this person to be unpleasant and confirm our expectations. Another example is a teacher who during the first lessons with a new class, based on first impressions, concluded that some pupils are more capable than others and then started to devote more time to them, helping and motivating them. Because of this, those pupils may try harder, achieving better results than others. The teacher involuntarily influenced the situation in a manner that confirmed her first impressions. In computer science, there is a group of algorithms called heuristics. Heuristics allow to find an approximate solution in a reasonable and practically useful time. 
They are used when algorithms that find exact solutions are too slow to be of practical use. Human mind also uses tools called heuristics, judgment heuristics to be exact, that were researched and described mainly by Daniel Kahneman and Amos Tversky. Judgment heuristics are mental shortcuts that allow human mind to form quick judgments and make quick decisions. There are many judgment heuristics. In this video, we will look at one of them. Imagine that you are walking down a street and suddenly you notice a crowd running in the opposite direction, screaming and scared of something. What do you do? Do you immediately start to run away with them, like a thoughtless sheep that follows a herd? Or, before you make a decision like a conscious and thinking human, do you go to see what they are running away from? If you've chosen the second option, then I'm sorry, you are dead. You've been ripped apart by tigers that have escaped from the nearby zoo. You should have used the social proof heuristic. It would have told you that it's better to run away with the crowd. Social proof heuristic is used when we are not sure how to act in situations that are unclear to us. Then we usually assume that people in our surroundings know more about the situation than we do and we base our behavior on their behavior. This heuristic gives beneficial results when the other people actually know more about the situation than we do. But the obvious flaw is that the other people may be just as lost in the situation as we are. There is a certain situation where social proof usually gives adverse and even tragic results. You have probably heard of such situation. Someone needs immediate help because his health or life is in danger. There are many people around him, nobody is helping. In such situation, we usually complain that people can be so indifferent and callous. Is such simple explanation correct? Of course not. It's a bit more complicated. In such situation, the so-called bystander effect comes into play. It unfolds in several steps, as described by Bibla Tanay and John Darley, that we have to take in order to decide if we will help. First, obviously, we need to notice the situation. We may not notice it if we are in a hurry. If we notice the situation, we have to recognize it as a situation where someone needs help. At this stage, the number of people in our surroundings comes into play. It may appear that the more people there is, the greater the chance that someone recognizes that help is needed. Seems logical, but logic does not apply here. Actually, the more the people, the less the chance that someone recognizes that help is needed. And it's because of the social proof heuristic. We do not react immediately, but we pay attention to reactions of other people, and only then we make a decision. The problem is that when everyone is doing it, then no one is reacting, and everyone is concluding that since no one is reacting, then the situation doesn't require reaction. In effect, everyone is behaving as if nothing unusual is happening. But when it's clear that someone needs help, then we have to make another decision. Take responsibility for helping. Many factors can prevent it from happening. One of them also depends on the number of people in our surroundings. If there are many of them, then we may assume that someone must have already reacted. Call an ambulance or the police, or, for example, try to help the person who is lying on the pavement and concluded that he's drunk. If everyone is assuming that someone else has already reacted, then ultimately no one is reacting. In effect, in the crowd, diffusion of responsibility is occurring. No one is feeling as responsible as it is when one is the only witness. Another barrier that we must defeat is a lack of knowledge and skill. If we don't know how to help, then most probably we won't do it. We can be prevented from helping also by the fear of the costs of such action, exposing ourselves to danger, leaving the crowd and exposing ourselves to the public eye, or even making fool of ourselves if it turns out that our reaction was exaggerated. Or maybe we have already tried to help someone in the past and we suffered unpleasant consequences. The bystander effect leads to a paradoxical conclusion that there are greater chances that someone will assist us when, for example, we crash our car on a rarely attended road than if we crash on a busy highway. If you find yourself in such situation as a witness, recall the bystander effect and recall that the social proof heuristic can be very wrong. And if you've ever find yourself in a crowd as a person who needs help, then the only chance of receiving it may be to directly ask for help some specific person. In summary, you use, and you will continue to use automatic thinking, with all of its advantages and disadvantages. But you can minimize the disadvantages by being aware that you are using it, and that the conclusions reached by it are imperfect and can be completely wrong. And when they are wrong, they should be discarded, not protected.